Hello, welcome to the TBC Survey and Construction YouTube channel. In this video, I will be going through point feature extraction. I will be showing you how to get the location and attributes of trees, signs, and poles within your point cloud, and then automatically map those attributes to the feature codes. This dataset was collected with the Trimble SX10 scanning total station in the lovely city of Carcafou, France. This scan over here on the Project Explorer, I can open up the dropdown for the project and look in the imported files. And we'll see that there are two survey stations and one scanning station contained within this project. Alternatively, we can check scans to see this, or, um, and we can see that all of the point clouds are in one region. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get the polygon selection tool at the bottom of the window and I'm going to uh, trim the data that I don't need from this project. Kind of the extremity point cloud data, uh, the stuff that's just going to increase processing time for the data that I do care about. Um, so we have our points and our line work and our point cloud selected. However, on the point cloud ribbon in create region, uh, this will just use the point cloud data that I have selected. Alternatively, you can toggle just the point clouds in the view filter manager. I'm going to name this region Carcafou. I apologize to the French listeners. All right. I'm going to get my view filter manager, which is up here in the quick access toolbar. Um, from here, I'm going to hold shift, click on the little uh, collapse box to close all of my regions at once. I'm going to turn off my raw data as well as my uh, photogrammetry that hides the uh, image outlines from, that were captured by the SX10 total station. And I'm going to expand my scans, my point cloud regions, turn off my default, and that will have just the area of the point cloud that I'm concerned with. Excellent. So let's get into it, shall we? Um, open up a 3D view. This will allow us to more easily ensure that we're extracting the correct data. And open up in the point clouds ribbon in the deliverables tab extract point feature. Oh, we get this uh, message saying that it is recommended that we classify the regions beforehand for ground and high vegetation. Uh, doing this will make the command run faster and more accurately. Uh, do you want to open the extract classified point cloud regions command now? Uh, yes, I will do that. So we start by selecting region of the point cloud that we want to classify, which is my Carcafu region. And I will extract uh, buildings, ground, high vegetation, poles and signs, and power lines. Go ahead and hit extract and get that started. The advantage of the TBC classification command is that it relies solely on geometry in the point cloud. It doesn't rely on last codes or anything like that. So point clouds from any source can be classified within TBC. Uh, this point cloud is from an SX10 scanning total station. Uh, we can classify point clouds from the vision total stations like the S7, S9, or VX. Um, and we can classify aerial point clouds. We can classify terrestrial point clouds. We can do it all. I will close the extract classified point cloud region command. Now that we are classified, and as you can see, the blue regions are buildings. The green regions are high vegetation, including shrubbery and trees. The brown is the ground. And these red features are poles, or signs and poles. Uh, we also have yellow regions for power lines, but it appears that we don't have any in the project which is okay. This video is not to demonstrate the region classification ability. Uh, so let's get into the feature extraction. The first thing we need to do is um, in the project settings, we need to bring in our feature definition library. 
Uh, this is a fresh installation of TBC, so I haven't done that yet. So I'll go ahead and add my global features library. And also new to version 5.0 is the feature extraction attribute map. Um, I will explain what this does in a moment, but I'll go ahead and add the uh, stock or the bundled one with TBC first off and add that. This is a feature, a feature extraction attribute map already exists in your project. You've informed a new one. The existing one will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. All right, so we're going to start not with trees, but with poles. Um, the, notice the automatic box grays out. Uh, this functionality is not available in TBC today. Um, we currently only offer automatic extraction for trees. Uh, but for manual, here's the workflow. You begin by picking a point on the pole. Uh, when you click, we get this nice purple uh, kind of T appear. Uh, quick in the 3D view pan left and right to make sure that we have clicked on the pole and not a point behind it. And here there's a tip that appears. Press Enter key to extract. So I can press the Enter key or I can click on this Extract Pull Attributes button. Excellent. So we get this nice purple frame that shows us the top of the pole, the base of the pole, the base coordinate, as well as the diameter of the pole. Uh, so we can assign the block or the point that will be created a point ID. I'll go with point 1000. I'll leave it in the points layer. Or you can select the layer you want it to go in and for feature code. I have created a feature code called pull. Very aptly named, I know. We get the horizontal x, y, and z coordinate for the pull. If for some reason when it is extracted you don't agree with or um, it's obvious that an error has been made somewhere and you want to change the elevation, you can simply, with your highlight in the elevation box, click on the ground nearby and it will use that elevation or the, the point. And here now the elevations move, the height has stayed the same, so now the top of the pole is a little bit off. So what we can do is down here in the pole diameter, pole height box, and select on somewhere where the base of the pole is, and then select a point at the top of the pole, and it will use that height for the pole. So easy, quick QA in the pole and sign workflow. Um, or in all manual workflows actually. And then for, remember that EXL mapping file that I brought in earlier and I said I would explain what it is? Well, that's what this is for. Um, with this feature code, because this is my first time using it, I haven't, so these attributes are associated with this poll feature code and these numbers are output by TBC. So you need to tell TBC which attribute you want these numbers to be assigned to. Uh, you do this the first time, and this mapping is stored in that EXL file so that you can, I don't want to use the word forever, but um, for the foreseeable future, take that EXL file, and, or until we come up with something better at least, and share it with colleagues in your office or the people that are doing the data collection, and they will have that mapping and they don't have to do anything. Um, as for an attachment, this is a simple yes or no. Uh, this is just one of the attributes that we've set in the feature code library or that I've set for po the poll feature code and no there's no attachment on this attachment would be like a sign hanging from the side of it and hit add and um, I have this block object it isn't showing up because I have my raw data turned off I'll turn points on and we have our um, point with a block. Excellent. So there's the pole extraction. I've got a sign over here. It has been misclassified as high vegetation because of its proximity to this tree. Um, although that won't affect the accuracy of the point extraction. So in the extraction type, I change the selection to sign. In manual, I simply select a point on the pole and press the enter key. I could alternatively 
click on the Extract Sign Attributes button, and there's the sign extracted. We have our coordinate at the base of the sign, our height of the sign, this cool little graphic to indicate that we're extracting a sign and not a pole, and we have the diameter expressed with circles, so we can kind of visually inspect and ensure that that is in fact correct. Now back here in the command, we've got our point ID, it's automatically increased by one, the layers stay the same. For a feature code, I will use the feature code signs. Again, if for some reason the elevation was a little bit off or it's not the elevation that you want, you can, in the elevation box, simply click on the point cloud. If the diameter is a little off, you can click on two points and make a measurement. If the height isn't correct, you can click on the base and make a measurement up and it will adjust that height. And then again, I'll quickly map the attributes that I want selected. There's a, I have a box set up for content in case it's a parking sign, handicap sign, anything like that. And I will hit add. Perfect. And there's our point ready to go. Now on to trees. In trees, we have both a manual and an automatic mode. With this, you simply select a point on the trunk of the tree, press enter. It will extract the attributes associated with that tree. We get the trunk diameter, the coordinate at the base, the drip line or the size of the canopy, and the height of the tree. Um, you enter a feature code. Uh, the feature codes are all passives. You don't have to enter it every time, but I'm switching the type of feature that I'm extracting. So I do have to enter it in. And then we enter, or we map the attributes for uh, spread, diameter, and height, and I can enter in the type. Um, I've got broadleaf conifer, a bush, or uncertain. You might want more granularity in your, uh, this is determined by the feature code library, and hit add. Excellent, there's a tree. Let's go for another one here. Click on the tree trunk, enter. Because I've entered all those values already, we do a quick Visual confirmation, yeah, hit enter again, and we have a scaled block feature that is at that point. So there is the manual tree picking extraction. You might be asking, why use manual when I can use automatic? Well, I'm going to show you the best way to use the automatic extraction in TBC version 5. Um, so, first thing to know is that when the extract point feature command is opened, all of the points that are visible are the ones that will be searched through to find trees. So I'm going to close the command with my properties open and open a limit box in the point clouds ribbon view limit box. And I'll just get a couple trees here to give a good demonstration. Maybe a couple that look like they will be easy to use and a couple that looks like they might be a bit of a more of a challenge. There, that should be good. Just a couple of big trees here. Make sure that looks about right. Yeah, I'm not trimming any off. Uh, note that most of these trees don't have a good coordinate or good ground points nearby. So that'll be something fun to mess around with. So in point clouds, deliverables, back to the extract point feature command. So I'll hop over to automatic, change my starting point ID. I'll go with a thousand again. Um, layer points is okay, but if you hit spacebar here, it will open up the layer manager so you can create a new layer. I'll go with new layer one. For feature code, I will use my tree feature code. My attributes are mapped because of previously doing it with the manual picking. And go ahead and hit extract tree attributes. All right, so that took about seven, eight seconds. I'm recording the screen in the background on my computer. Uh, so it's noticeably slower when I um, do extraction with the screen recording. Uh, quick visual check. It looks like this leaning tree had some challenges, but it's there isn't good scan data at the base, and it's it's leaning, so that adds some challenge. And then it looks like the, these heights are good. This height's a little bit off, and it missed the trunk diameter on this middle tree. So, all right, so we can go through and QA that quite easily. I will go ahead and hit add. 
and back over on the manual tab, if we click in the pick a tree point, trick pick a tree trunk point, pardon me, then we have the tip control up and down arrow. So if I go ahead and hit control down, we will zoom in on the first point. We can check the coordinate that yeah, that looks like the height's good and the coordinate is good. And the spread, yeah, that looks about the right size. And here in the properties, we can see the trunk diameter. We have 25 centimeters, and yeah, that's that looks good. Control down to get to the next tree. Here we have um, the coordinate looks good, the height looks good, the spread looks about right. And here in the properties, we can see the trunk diameter five centimeters. That sounds a little bit small to me. So I'll uh, turn so that we don't have any points behind the tree trunk. This is where the limit box is particularly handy. I will control D to delete it. Click with the cursor already in here because of control up down, I can click and hit enter. And that will re-extract the tree. So the coordinate looks good at the base, the diameter, that looks much better. And the spread, yeah, that looks good, and height's good, excellent. So I can hit enter and store that. And so now we can go control down to get to the next one. The coordinate looks good, diameter looks good, excellent. And control down for the next one. So this is that troublesome tree. So I'll control D, delete that. I'll click on the tree trunk, hit enter to extract. And the um, coordinate at the base, yeah, that looks pretty good. The spread, that looks about right. It's a little bit over on here, but in on here. So I think that will that should be all right. How's the height look? The height might be a little bit short. So for trunk height, I can click here. I'll select the ground point right next to the tree and then a point at the top of the tree. That will bring the height up a little bit, which is good. The trunk diameter, that looks perhaps a little bit small. So I'll go over here and I'll select a point here and a point here to measure one of the larger sections of the tree coming up. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and hit add and control down. And this will be our last tree for QA. Um, the ground height looks pretty good. Um, what the what TBC does when searching for a ground point, if there isn't one directly at the base of the tree, it will search outwards until it finds the nearest ground point. Um, if it, it'll go up to six meters away um, if there are no ground points. But generally, we should have decent coverage for scan data, especially where elevation is a concern. And so the diameter 20 centimeters, that sounds pretty good. And control down, we're back to our first tree. Excellent, so there is the automatic point feature extraction in TVC version 5. One more interesting thing to note is with your mapping file, your EXL file, if you want to share that with family, folks in your office, colleagues, clients, hey, even a, makes a good birthday present for family members, or friends for that matter, uh, you can use this extract feature extraction attribute map file. And clicking on that will have us ex be able to export this and share it with others. Excellent. So. There is the extract point feature in TBC version 5. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments what you like, what you don't like. And as always, thank you for watching.